Now, the second part of this address to Muslims. The first part was basic Iman and Shirk and amal -e saleh all these things which were very basic. These actually are the subjects which are discussed in detail in the Makki surahs. Here a brief, you may say, survey. But now again to the Muslims. Regarding the reformation of the society, the rules of conduct now in the society. In the very first section of this surah, there were some commandments about women, about orphans. But there arose into the minds of the people certain questions and doubts about those things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now explaining. People came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to ask questions about it. What does it mean? How can we do it? Now these questions. Yes, taftunak fin nisa. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they want a pronouncement about women. Qulillahu yuftikum fi hin. Tell them Allah is going to pronounce. Give you a pronouncement. Regarding women. وَمَا يُطْلَعَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الْكِتَابِ فِي يَتَامَ النِّسَاء And what has been already which is recited to you in the book about the orphan women. يَتَامَ النِّسَاء In the ayah number 3 of this very surah you know the mention was there. But people I told you the munkreen is sunnah who don't take sunnah to be the exegesis of Quran to be the authentic or exegesis of Quran, they interpret it in different way. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blocked their way. He has made his commandment absolutely clear. That is the Yataman Nisa, the orphan girls. Allati la tutuna hunna ma kutibala hunna. Watargabuna antan kehu hunna. You want to marry them? They are under your guardianship. You want to marry them? Because they are orphans. You will not have to pay the dowry. And nobody will be there to ask for their rights. You don't want to pay to them what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fixed for them. And you want to marry them. And you know the oppressed people among the oppressed ones among the children. And that you should Establish justice about orphans. Now it is Kama Bay Antokimu Lil Yatama Bil Kist. A Kama Bay Bil Kist with justice. So you have to establish justice. Mama Tafalu min Khairin Fain Allah Kana Bihi Alima. And whatever good you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very well knows it. Don't think it will go in vain or in waste. Now, second issue. In the beginning of this surah we discussed, if a husband feels that the wife is becoming disobedient, she is not behaving as she should, then what to do? That was given in the beginning. Now the converse of it. Maybe that a woman thinks that the husband is cruel to him. He is not paying his, her due. A due attention, for example. After all, she is in wedlock with the person. She is the wife. He is the husband. She has some rights over, her, over him. And he is not performing the duties. If a woman fears from her husband, nushuzan, that is oppression or cruelty, or or neglect, ignoring, now he is ignoring her, not coming to her, not meeting her. So these things, you know, what should you do? فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْهِمَا أَنْ يُسْلِحَا بَيْنَهُمَا سُلْحَا There will be no blame on them if they fix some new terms between them. The woman can say, okay, I let you have part of the dowry that you paid to me. Okay, but live with me. In a, in a maruf way, in a just, justifiable way. So actually anything, a new treaty can be made. They can adjust the things between them so that they can live together. And they can live as real wife and husbands because that is the essence of the family life. But sulho khair, and you know peace and treaty, this is much better. 
even if you have to give up something. Verily, these inner souls of man, the basic and the baser selves in man, there is, you know, greed in it. Woman will also say, I don't want to forego the part of the dowry that you paid to me, but to make some, some reconciliation, to make things better, if you can do it, you must do it. But if you, if you adopt a good attitude and you have the regard of Allah, taqwa of Allah, you are God conscious, you are Allah conscious, you have Allah in your mind, taqwa, and you are trying to save yourself from Allah's displeasure. So whatever you are doing, Allah is very well aware of it. Third, because it was said in the beginning, if you want to have more than one wife, you have to be, to do full justice between them. All the things that can be measured or weighed must be given equally. Your time equal. The time you are passing with this wife must be equal to the time you are passing with that wife. The money that you are giving to this wife, the equal sum must be paid to the other wife. The dress, what type of dress you are providing to them, you have to provide here also. All the things that can be weighed and measured. But you know, there is one thing which is not in the control of man. And that is his heart. He might have love for one more than the other. And this is beyond the control of human beings. So that is now made clear here. And it is impossible for you in this respect to do justice to the women. Although you might be eager to do that. But you can't do it. But don't incline towards one absolutely. So as to leave the other one as suspended in between. She is neither married nor, you know, without, nor with a husband or neither without a husband. This is muallaq, hanging in between. Don't leave her in suspense. You have gone to one side only and the other wife is now muallaq. وَالْتَدَرُوهَا كَالْمُعَلَّقَةً وَإِن تُسْلِحُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا And if you make amendments, make, amend your ways, and number two, if you have real taqwa, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever forgiving and ever merciful.